Hello everyone and nice to meet you. My name is Daniela. I'm a knitter based in Perth, Western Australia. And I invite you to come into my little <laughs> yarny corner in my house in, in Australia and have a chat together. I am originally Italian, but uh, before moving to Perth, I was living in the United Kingdom. That was a long nine years there. And now we had this chance of moving over here for a period of time. And it's a time of new beginnings for us. So I thought, well, it's about time I give a go to this, this thing of knitting, podcasting. <laughs> Well, knitting's been my passion for quite a quite a few years now, but together with it, uh, I think what I enjoy the most is sharing the love for for yarn, for you know new techniques, for you know making beautiful things together with a, a lot of our knitters on on the internet all over the world, and uh, yes. I'm happy to to meet you all. I'm I'm very grateful if you've watched this far already, and uh, I hope you enjoy the content I'm about to share today. I'll start with the usual sort of format for these uh, this kind of podcasts. That is uh, what I'm wearing. This is a two years old top that I drafted and uh, I drafted myself. Basically, I made it up while I was knitting because because I had these, uh, I think they are DMC um, cotton balls in different colors. And I thought it would be nice to make up something colorful and, uh, you know, fun. You'll have, a, you'll see a lot of colors <laughs> in this podcast. So I hope this is your your cup of tea. Yeah, I really like it. It's it's very fun and it's easy to wear. As you can imagine where I am, it's summer now. It's really hot. So as much as I like to, to work with wool and most of my needs are, are woolen needs, uh, I do need to wear cotton now. It's It's over 30 degrees Celsius. So, you know. Finished objects. So um, it looks like since the beginning of this year, I've knitted mainly accessories. To be honest, I've, I've got quite a soft spot for accessories, though I like my garments as well. And uh, yes, and the first one I'm showing you is um, this massive croissant. <laughs> is this shape telling you anything? Well, I suppose you've seen it all over the internet and all over Instagram. This is my Sophie shawl by Petit Knit. It is a um, shawl. Uh, I'd say in my case, it's more like a scarf because you see it isn't very deep. It's It's very, very long though. And I've knitted this one with um, a combination of two um, strands, Drops Nord, which is, as many of you may be aware of, is a really affordable, really soft and nice yarn. And another uh, fingering weight uh, strand, which uh, is basically changing all over the scarf to create this mild effect, which I find phenomenal. I love it so much, particularly, you know, these se section where you've got all your teals. And then this one, how cool is this one with the mustard and green colors? And down here, the very bright neon yellow yarn. I absolutely adore how the, you know, the color combination of these yarns have played together one with the other. And uh, what makes this scarf even, you know, dearer to me is the fact that the um, hand dyed uh, yarn that I've paired with the cream one, they are from 
a, an advent calendar, a swap advent calendar with a very dear um, friend of mine. Uh, her name is Leah and you find her on Instagram as Leah Amber Needs. And I recommend you check her <laughs> account because she started designing her own garments and accessories and she's got some fantastic designs coming out right now. Uh, she's in the testing phase for some of them and, you know, really amazing. So this scarf really needs means a lot to me and I have enjoyed working on it so much, seeing how the, the color the colors change throughout it. Need to take it off now. <laughs> it's super hot here. So highly recommended pattern, very easy, very relaxing. Probably most of the people for, who follow Petite Knit have tried it and yeah, it's super squishy, super fun because you can personalize it, tailor it to your tastes as much as you want. So yeah, recommend it. Another uh, finished object that I've got here is another shawl, this time much smaller. Actually, you can hold it in, in your own two hands and it weighs only 98 grams altogether. It's a design by Hohi Locatelli, another, you know, established and fantastic designer who uh, designed this pattern for a single skein of yarn, so 100 grams, fingering weight. And this is the Venezia show. There it is. Now, you learn about me that I hardly ever knit the same pattern twice. Actually, I think this is the first time because I knit this one uh, on my way to Italy, where I went for the uh, Christmas holidays in December and gave it to a family member, our dear Zia, <laughs> as a Christmas present. And on my way back from Italy here to Perth, I started this second one, which is now going to be another present for a very dear friend of mine back in the UK. So it'll, it'll be wrapped up and sent off very soon. So the, this, sh this uh, shawl, this scarf mainly, it, it is quite long. It's, a, it's about 130 centimeters and not and again, quite shallow, only 32 centimeters, is um, basically a um, diamond shape shawl that has got this uh, nice, very decorative ribbing uh, in the middle and a lace running all around the edges. I think it's a sim quite a simple knit. The lace is quite simple, so I must tell you, it must be my menopausal brain. I couldn't memorize it at all. Anyway, it's, it isn't difficult, uh, even after, you know, knitting it twice. But anyway, it's, uh, it's very decorative, very nice. And uh, I find it easy to wear. I think it'll be absolutely pretty and handy also for somebody who's not necessarily into very big and chunky shawls and scarves as I am. So I think it, it should be a very good option as a, as a gift knit. And I must say the first one I, I gave to our, our Zia was very, very much appreciated. So I hope my friend appreciates it as, as well. The first one I knit in, I'll pop up a photo. Will I manage that? I don't know, I'll try. <laughs> um, was knit in Cascade Alpaca Lace uh, Held Double and was extremely soft. And the Alpaca Lace uh, has got a, a bit of a heathered uh, look which is I, I find absolutely interesting because the the color has very much depth hasn't it while this one is actually knit in this mystery yarn that i bought in italy 
it's a blend of alpaca it's a single in terms of of you know construction i hope you can see that and it's um, a blend of alpaca and silk and i find you know in real life it's got quite a nice sheen to it i hope you you can appreciate that on camera and again it's absolutely soft and drapey and uh, very very nice talking about this uh, this shawl this cholet let's call it like that um, i thought i'd share with you another recent passion of mine still knitting related which is um which is keeping a knitting journal a knitting journal where I, of course, track the progress on my projects. I jot down my dream knits. I keep track of the podcasts I'm watching. I keep note of the yarn I buy and how much I pay for that. Uh, there's an awful lot of things in this knitting journal of mine and I, I thought you may enjoy having a look at it. So this is the page I made for this Venezia show that I've, I've just shown you. Right here is uh, the, the lace pattern that I've, I've written down because I, I couldn't remember it and I didn't want to have my phone in front of me all the time. So basically what I do, I, you know, make notes about any modifications or about the yarn I use, about the needles I use. So this one is a four millimeter needles. I write down the day I cast it on and the day I, I bind it off just to have an idea. And I also wrote, wrote down here that this is my airplane knit for my trip back. To Australia after the holidays and it's quite nice I also <laughs> tried to to draw a little bit of Venezia and a gondola and it's really nice for me because during this holiday in Italy for the first time we took our children to Venezia and we we had a nice ride on a gondola and so it's all very fitting and it it, it you know puts together a lot of nice memories not only the, the knitting details, the technical details of this project. So that's that. We've got two shawls, very different, very pretty, both of them. And then I've got another petite knit uh, project uh, pattern, which is this pair of gloves, the penny gloves. Again, a project that you have seen all over the internet, in particular, if you follow uh, Laura of the Penrose Knits um, podcast, she knit, I think, three or four or five <laughs> pairs to give away as presents for her children's teachers and, and, other and other people. These are actually a present themselves that I'm sending over to the UK to a dear friend. And uh, yes, they are a pair of gloveless, of fingerless mitts with this mm, particularly long cuff that I think is really different and really nice to look at, at least. I'm not quite sure of how practical it would be mm, to be worn, you know, and particularly put on when you've got your coat on. But, you know, practicality is not always the thing, the most important thing, is it? Particularly when it comes to knitting and to, you know, being creative. So um, in the original pattern, they are normally knit in only one color, but I don't do only one color if I can do otherwise, as you'll see later. So um, what I did here, I, I turned these into a scrappy project, basically. I used um, some Katia sock yarn for the first bit of the cuff. Then this second section is a beautiful hand-dyed uh, fingering yarn by mm, Snuggly Stars. Mm. 
Handaya. I will pop the details in the description box below because now I may be a little bit confused about what the name exactly is. And this main section is Filcolana Arveta. The fingering weight yarn though is held together throughout the, the fabric uh, with a strand of um, silk mohair. It's a mystery yarn I bought in a, in a warehouse, in a wool warehouse in, in Italy. So I couldn't tell you the color or you know the, the exact composition, but it does have some uh, silk in it together with the mohair. And then uh, you may notice I also wanted to add another personalization, which is the mismatched thumbs. So I did one in the plain uh, aubergine color and one in the uh, you know speckled yarn, which I think is quite nice. And to be honest with you, I didn't have any more of the Phil Colana Veta to finish off this bit. So it's kind of, you know, losing a yarn chicken, but I never see it like that. I always see it as a <laughs> sort of, you know, artistic fit <laughs> of the moment. So here they are. I think we are over and done with the finished objects and I need to speed up because I don't want this episode to be like an hour and a half. It's just the first one and I'm dead scared <laughs> of the editing. And I'll go then to my works in progress. I've got, let's say two that I'm more or less actively working on. The one I'm working on most actively at the moment is this fantastic Pinguino. I told you, you'd see color in here. And this is my current obsession, to be honest with you. <laughs> it's been in my list for a very, very long time. Actually, I've got a Penguono in my, you know, plans for the new year. Let's go back to the, to the journal and I'll show you. Well, this is at least part of my <laughs> new year plans because they, they get updated all the time. So where is it? This is my Penguono in the new year plans. But I've just decided to give a go to the, to the Penguino first to see how, you know, how I, I enjoyed it. This is for my daughter, my little girl who's 10. And I've knitted it, uh, I'm knitting it with five millimeter needles, I believe. I may be wrong, I'll write it down. And I've done the back piece with this fantastic yarn, very busy yarn by King Cole called Bamboozled. So this is a, a, a mix uh, of bamboo, wool and acrylic. A hundred grams is 140 meters and the recommended needles are six millimeters. And the back panel is knit in um, Moss stitch, moss stitch. Now, let's stop here, just in case you're not familiar with the project, which is highly unlikely. Anyway, it's a really crazy, oversized, sort of scrappy cardigan with a fun construction, which is basically made up of all different, mostly re rectangles uh, or squares, or let's say geometric elements um, and you are supposed to use your scrappy yarn for it and just mix and match and make it as you know a bit like a, a bit like a painting a bit like a, a sketchbook where you put down all the colors and all the the inspiration of the moment the combinations that are that make you feel happy at the moment. And that's what I'm doing. So this back panel is, let's say the inspiration, the, the palette uh, part where I part, part starting from here, then I'm building up not only the various, you know, knitted elements, but also the colors that I'm using. So I've done these side welds that <laughs> 
it's the first time I've made wells and, and though they are a bit, you know, labor intensive, but they are, they are quite cute. Uh, so I've done a pink one with some neon yarn in it. I've done a light teal one and this one that's got some orangey bits in it. So these are all two or three strands of different fingering or DK yarns held together. And then I'm now doing the side panel, which again, in this case, it's three strands of uh, yarn. Two of them are um, hand-dyed fingering, and this one is actually um, an Australian mix, uh, an, an Australian band, um, brand of organic uh, yarn made of wool and cotton. Anyway, I used it for other for other projects and I'm actually striping it here. So uh, in, in some stripes, I use these three cut, these two colors with a with a brushed alpaca pale pink um, strand. And in other stripes, I, I sub I swap over the pink, the yellow with the pink. So it's these two and another pinkish pinkish one. So what will come next you know what the central piece will be because basically this is the back the big one is the back this is the side so this is going gonna be your armholes and then it carries on on this side to build up the the side piece and then it comes to the front you carry on and come to the front bit uh half of it because being a cardigan of course it's it's uh open in the front so I'll, I'll just add more colors as i go and i'm having I, I just think it's terrific i'm having so much fun with this one and yeah actually my daughter has has told me two days ago that yeah i know you're making this one for me but i think you're making it for yourself more like and it's uh, I must say she's got a point because I really I enjoy it so much you know in being able to make it up while I go it's uh, in terms of colors I, I think it's just a fantastic exercise for my inner child <laughs> let's call it like that and I've of course I've got a page on my on my journal for this one as well it's still a bit empty because i've been working on, on the actual piece so much that i haven't had much time to fill in my journal but here it is the the cute illustration i've i've made you know the this pinguino <laughs> that's wearing the the card itself and here i've sort of made i've done a bit of like scrapbooking to put together you know color inspiration sort of elements and this is uh, the the you know a, a bit of a drawing of how uh, it's constructed and the oh, I'm trying to sort of reproduce the color choice I do on the on, you know by picking the yarn on this on the on paper which again is a is a very fun sort of exercise so that's it and then I've got another work in progress that I want to talk to you about though I must say this has had a bit of a stop and um, yeah I basically I just think I need to completely rip it off and start again so um, I've been meaning to make this jumper for the longest time and I've had the yarn in store again forever. This is a 100% wool uh, fingering weight yarn that I bought in the UK at Bakewell Yarn Festival um, in the Yorkshire Dales, I think, if I'm not I hope I don't get a poor mark in geography here. Um, again, a mystery yarn. You can guess that I quite like, you know, just to grab what my fancy is telling me with, without worrying too much about, you know, uh, labels or, or brands. And if I can also 
you know, get a good deal, that's, that's even more important. So I've, I've had this yarn for the longest time and for Christmas I've been kindly gifted. Well, I may have suggested that I wanted this yarn, but I've been kindly gifted this gorgeous silk mohair by uh, Lana Gatto by my mother-in-law in, in, in the best color that uh, would suit the yarn I had. It's color 30141. No happy names for, for these colors, colorways, I'm afraid. And yeah, I suppose you've guessed it right already. It's a lento. It's a lento that, you know, I've been meaning to knit forever. It's been in my queue forever. And then when I saw Emmy Palco of the Meaningful Stitch and the Crea Bear and Rebecca Klobay uh, of the Crea Bear podcast, announced their Let's Lento cull, I just thought, that's it, that's the time to, to cast it on, and I did. But I wanted to make a modification to the neckline because living in a quite warm country, I can't see myself wearing, uh, you know, a double collar like the pattern suggests, so you should knit the ribbing for longer and then fold it and, and knit or, or sew it down to have a very squishy and thick and absolutely lovely collar, but I don't think that would be the best for me. So I've decided to um, make a, a simple neckline with following the directions for a tubular caston uh, that you find in the ranunculus pattern that I've done before and I've enjoyed very much making and I think gives a beautiful result. Now, the problem was that um, when I uh, cast on the provisional cast on, which is what you need to do, and then I started knitting with, the, with this yarn, well, I twisted the cast on. Who hasn't done that before? But somehow I thought, that as I had to undo the provisional cast on in the end, I wouldn't really notice the problem there so much. And I was wrong. So uh, this is what I've got here. Now I've sort of tied it together with a little bit of, of more hair, but you can see this is not right. And while I'm not a profession, perfectionist at all. I am here for the joy, I'm here for the process, I'm not a perfectionist at all. This is kind of bothering me quite a bit. Moreover, and here you have to tell me if you are the same, I find that the easier the project, the easier it is for me to make mistakes. Anyway, this very easy Aglan, raglan increase on this side is unfortunately wrong. In a couple of places, I sort of messed up the, um, the increases. And honestly, if you add one thing to the other and you consider that after all, this is neat on, you know, quite a loose gauge. So this is a six millimeter needles and it is supposed to, you know, grow really, really fast. I think I'm now persuaded that I'll rip it off and I'll start again because I, I really care for this jumper. I really want something nice and, you know, with no defects, basically. <laughs> so again, here is my page on, on my knitting journal. There is a cast-on date here and, you know, I may just add a little note here to say what's happened and then re you know re-enter the the actual cast on date when I'll finally get to to do that and and start it from scratch again. Never mind. You know it's it's just how I feel at the moment. I've sort of carried on and, and finished off garments that had mistakes before and I don't really care that much. In this case, 
I I quite care and I think I'll I'll end up you know redoing it. Last section for today is dream needs or well what's what's coming next. <sighs> it's difficult to choose because I've got so many ideas in mind. You've seen my my new year plans and then you know it's like your your queue on ravelry oh by the way i'm danny uk on ravelry but i'm a very poor user so i do not recommend following me there it's it's easier if you want to be up to date to what to what i do that you uh, follow my instagram page which is a knitter's suitcase well what a poor podcaster. I haven't even explained that. So yes, uh, that's my Instagram handle. And basically it's just because I travel a lot. I, um, I recently moved and both times when I moved over here and now after the holidays, when I came back here, it was, you know, a good portion of our suitcases were actually full of yarn and full of my projects and knitting bags and, and my knitting journal. So that that came natural as a as a sort of nickname. So yes, if you follow me on Instagram and I'm posting daily at the moment as I'm I'm joining this uh, very fun uh challenge that's going on at the minute called February. So every day in February, you share something about your your knitting practice and your, you know, creativity with with needles and yeah. So something that is going to come up soon, I'm not sure it'll be the next cast on, but it's gonna come up soon, is a painted honeycombs shawl. A gorgeous pattern by uh, Stephen West, another of my idols when it comes to, to you know, designers and, and knitting patterns. And yeah, I've got this very pretty combination of minis, which are actually two separate sets of the um, Fino heels on that. Here we are. Sorry. So Fino is um, a blend of extra fine merino and silk by Manos del Uruguay. This is the, the brand. And I think paired with a probably dark, you know, main color, the honeycombs in these shades should be really, really, really pretty. And this yarn is extremely soft and squishy and and delicious they are uh, singles as you can see so i think they really are perfect for this kind of project so that's one of my of my plans for you know for the sort of next uh, next cast ons and then i've got another two that i'm gonna mention today one is another pair of mittens um again for another gift and uh, again, fingerless mittens, and I'm going to knit the medley mitts by Helen Stewart um, that I got as part of the Knit Vent 22 collection. Uh, I already made the uh, Oddman's cowl as a present at Christmas, and I think it was absolutely beautiful. These mitts are very simple. They are three bands of color. If I'm not wrong, maybe there's a fourth color for the cuff and the ribbing at the fingers. And uh, um, they have an eyelet motif just above the, the cuffs that I may or may not omit. But that's, that's what I've got in mind. And that should be a fairly quick knit. And then another pattern that I've been planning to make for the longest time is the Pink Sheep um, Cardigan by Ruke Knit, a very talented knitter from uh, knitter and designer from Luth Lithuania. You can find her on Instagram and uh, on Ravelry and she's got her own website as well. So this is a very cute cardigan that I see 
more as a sort of a as a jacket to wear here in the in in Australia considering that the winter is mild I would like to use this chunky yarn which is a um, alta moda cashmere by Lana Grossa I got it's discontinued now again it's one of my deals that I <laughs> stole in this uh, warehouse in Italy it's uh, to be knit with uh, six millimeter needles and i think the style of this cardigan is absolutely fun because it's quite cropped uh, it's got three quarter sleeves a little uh, sort of standing up neckline and um, while it's stocking it until you know the yoke is in stocking it then um, some i think it's fisherman rib or brioche um, yeah, is, uh, is how the, the second part of the body and of the sleeves is knitted. So it, it gets, you know, you get these very important sort of statement sleeves and, and, and bottom. And I think it'll be very nice as a, you know, a garment to wear outside in, uh, in winter in, in you know, the mild climate should make that quite nice. So that's all for today. I don't want to make it too long. Um, I'll tell you more of myself and, you know, my projects next time if you want to follow me. I'm extremely grateful for your, you know, your patience with uh, all my blubbering today. And uh, I hope you enjoyed what you saw. And uh, if so, please subscribe give me a thumbs up Ooh. <laughs> sounds so strange to say all these things but thanks again thanks again for following me and for watching this episode and take care find some time for yourself today don't always run around and uh, you know stop breathe do some of your knitting look after yourself and have a fantastic day Thank you. Bye.